Budget 2024 is about big tax headlines, capital gains on listed shares, on unlisted shares, on property, securities transaction tax, buyback taxation. There are many, many big changes that have been announced from a capital market standpoint. The good news, however, is in the form of some sweeteners in the personal income tax regime. So what does this budget mean for our savings, our investments and our wealth? Well, joining me in the studios are uh, Swaroop Mohanty of Mirai Asset Investment Managers, Radhika Gupta of Edelweiss Asset Management and Feroz Aziz of Anandrati Wealth. And of course, we have to have our tax expert on this panel because tax is what this budget has been all about. Samir Gupta of EY India joining in for all of that perspective. Thank you all, lady and gentlemen, for, uh, for joining in. I must say that, you know, I was going back in time and remembering when we had the first capital gains tax increase, the 10% happened in 2018. What followed was a lot of mayhem, heartburn, uncertainty, tears. This seems to be a different market, you know. Radhika, who would say that today was a day when capital gains tax was increased? Look at the way we've closed, but your first thoughts. And you're also smiling, by the way. I am smiling. <laughs> Uh, I think I think the market is uh, one. One of my learnings over the last few years is that it's hard to predict events, and it's even harder to predict the market's reaction to events. And I think that's that. That's what today is. You know, look. I think 12 and a half percent on long term is a bit of a surprise for everyone. I'm not going to take that away. Uh, but I think the market absorbs these things. I mean, when you look at the perspective, zero became 10. Actually, I don't think it had an adverse impact on equities. In fact. From a mutual fund point of view, it gives you some impetus to hold for long. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's just switching when it's zero. So I don't think 10 becoming 12 and a half uh, in the kind of capital gains that people are actually seeing is a very big deal. I think there are also other positive surprises. You know, uh, debt taxation has remained the same, which is not something that, you know, all of us love. But a lot of other mutual fund instruments, and we can go to the nuances, whether it's gold, international, etc., have mm -hmm. gone from marginal tax mm. to 12 and a half percent. And finally, I think the whole regime has been very simplified. This concept of capital assets, non-capital assets, which is debt, and harmonizing short-term, long-term on everything. I think the simplification is very good. And the market has moved past this quite quickly. Swarup, are you as sanguine? Yeah, I'll take it on uh, from Radhika. Is that, you know, initially, of course, the dampener was capital gains tax. People do not like change in taxation. And at a time when we are moving from fixed assets to financial assets, the consistency of tax rates is always very important in the long run. We have to in increase or, you know, kind of push for more inclusion. But when you look at what's happened, and that's what Radhika said, it's now flattened the taxation at 12.5. My only observation is it should now remain at this yeah. for the next, for the next yeah. five, ten years. Once you flattened, it's good, but increase in taxation never helps. Mm -hmm. But one small part uh, was the fund of funds, which was an anomaly, got corrected this time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the debt part, which was a requirement, I had personally called that out, ki it should happen. That didn't happen. At a time when you are getting included in the bond index, I would have expected the regime to push for more participation from retail. Anyway, we'll wait for that. But yeah. Uh, broadly, it is, uh, from a taxation percent, uh, perspective, a little bit of a damper, but the liquidity is such that it will absorb everything at this moment in the market. Well, which is what we were discussing, right? You have election upsets, they get absorbed. You have tax hikes, they get ex absorbed. I mean, it, sometimes it makes you feel a little dizzy or a little giddy, but then that's the market that we're in. I'm going to come to you, Feroz, in just a minute, once we get the tax expert to weigh in on all that we've heard today. Samir, so tell us, I mean, we were discussing this earlier as well, right? But did you expect this? Short term, long term, property, STT, buybacks? I mean, almost <laughs> nothing was spared. No, no, absolutely. And I think we've discussed this a lot, uh, uh, Surbi, as the run up over here, right? Yeah. Just yesterday also we were discussing this. And I think that, look, uh, let's look at the bigger picture. You know, we did discuss that uh, at one level, the uh, finance minister did want to go for a refresh or an overhaul of the entire tax code. And in fact, she did speak about that. Mm -hmm. I think then it comes to, you know, the building blocks and as to whether capital gains regime overall would happen now or not. That it was to happen, I think, was a given. But I think it's just that the timing was accelerated into this budget itself, which I think probably is what has surprised everyone. I think we all agree that from a simplification and a rationalization point of view, uh, this is something whose time had come. It's never a good thing to increase tax rates. Uh, but I guess, you know, just as we had in 2018 and the market took it in the stride, you know, I'm hoping that this time as well, the same happens. The only thing I would also say, therefore, is uh, when the overhaul happens for the entire Direct Tax Act 1961, uh, you know, will they again look to touch capital gains? I think that is something which, you know, I hopefully 
uh, they have done everything that they needed to. Uh, so hopefully there is no un unfinished business, barring, as was rightly said, maybe to some extent on debt mutual funds. Uh, but yes, uh, not expected in this shape and size for sure. Okay, I have a couple of questions that we need clarification on. Uh, one is uh, buybacks and the, the second is property. Let me start with the latter first, Samir. It's very clear that, you know, on property, uh, long term remains two years, but the rate of tax has now come down from 20% to 12.5%, but indexation goes away. Can you clarify for our viewers whether, I mean, they will, if there's an old house that you've, you owned sort of 30, 30 years back, will there be no reset? What happens? Is this essentially a blow? Or as uh, some of the secretaries were clarifying in the press conference, that it should be net-net neutral. Do, do, you, do you see it that way? See, I mean, I think the indexation going away is a big piece. It all comes down to, you know, your cost price, the vintage with which you held the asset, to see whether you are better off with indexation and 20%, or are you better off with, you know, original cost and 12.5%. Uh, it all comes down to the maths. Uh, but uh, from whatever we saw in the fine print, uh, it is pretty much gone, the indexation is not there. And therefore, you know, you will have to pretty much do a simple calculation. And simplification was the objective of this rationalization, right? So it is a uh, clear cut case where, you know, you would look at the original cost and then work out the gain and then work out a 12 and a half percent if you held the property for more than two years. But I think that is how it will happen. But fair to say that the longer you've held that, uh, you know, real estate uh, property, the greater the chances that maybe you you do have to look at a blow. Would that I mean, I don't know, it's, it's a simplistic assumption right now, but is it the right direction? Yeah, I mean, you would, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you held the property for very long, mm. then obviously, you know, you would have got a much higher cost base, yeah. correct? Uh, so, so that would be a blow to you. That's okay. Right. Okay, so very quickly, coming to buybacks, uh, and Samir here as well, that arbitrage that people had between you know, dividends which were taxed at your slab rate and a buyback which was being taxed at 20% of the company level. Now, that's been done away. Just explain the mechanics to us. There's been a fair amount of back and forth on this as well as to how this will work, the new format of buybacks. Yeah, so I think you need to just step back into time again, uh, Surbi. You know, the uh, dispute has always been in the case of uh, buybacks as to whether what the company is returning is to be given the characterization of dividend or it is to be given the characterization of capital gains. You know, very long back, it was when, when none of this existed, it was treated as capital gain whenever the buyback happened. Then, of course, we moved to a regime where, uh, you know, you we went into dividend distribution tax regime. As part of that, you know, when it came to buyback, they basically said that when the company distributes uh, income, as they called it, there will be a BBT of 20%, correct? Now, that 20%, you know, as a rate, was uh, still, uh, you know, more favorable uh, than the full rates at which dividend could be taxed, which could be, you know, 30% upwards. Mm. So to that extent, even as of uh, the time, which is even yesterday, uh, when you had uh, BBT in play, uh, it was favorable than the dividend full taxation. Now what they are proposing to do, as they have said, is that uh, the BBT will be scrapped and uh, you will go to a situation where, from a shareholder point of view, everything that the company pays you, correct, will be the entire gross value of what is paid to you, will be treated in your hands as a shareholder as dividend income. And therefore, if you are in the high income tax bracket, then you go to the highest rate. And whatever was your cost of acquisition, because you did own these shares and you did pay a price, and since you are being now taxed as dividends on a gross basis, the cost of acquisition that you had incurred on buying those shares will be available to you as a capital, capital loss, loss to be set off against any other gains that you have. Okay. Now, if you don't have gains, then obviously, you know, you're in a bit of a uh, stuck situation. Mm. Uh, but but that's the way the law has now been written. No, got it. And I think that's an important point to remember that the dividend is dividend income taxed at your slab rate. The price at which you bought the shares, that is your, you know, uh, loss, capital loss to be set off against capital gains. Got that point. We'll come back to you on, on more tax matters. Uh, but Radhika, you mentioned gold, and we saw that gold was the brightest sparkle in the mar market mm -hmm. today as well. So just explain to us, with the, so one is customs duties come down, and that's yes. one favorable piece. But in terms of just the treatment, um, uh, in terms of capital gains taxation, you mentioned there could be some changes for uh, gold ETFs or funds? Yeah, so there is, there are broadly three classifications mm -hmm. of funds, right? And if you look at fund taxation, you know, there were things that had long-term, short-term, the old 15 and 10 regime. 
there were things that were marginal which was the old debt regime mm -hmm. and then there were things which were in the old debt taxation which is indexation regime correct, so that correct. all this was floating around yeah. essentially in my understanding you have three regimes mm -hmm. one is debt mutual funds which are not capital assets so long term or short term they are marginal so that's very right. clear there right. is no change the second is equity oriented mutual funds which mm -hmm. are now 20% short term so that's mm -hmm. an upping from 15, 15 to 20. and then 10 becomes 12, 12 and, and a half. half. Yeah. Now you have this third other category mm. of mutual funds. Mm. What does this include? This includes gold ETF and index funds. Mm. It includes fund of funds which were actually, so if you had a fund of fund that mm. was just buying two underlying mutual funds, mm. a large cap yeah. fund and a mid yeah. cap fund, yeah. it was actually taxed at marginal rates as, as of last as, year. Uh, as per debt. I mean, as almost per as debt, it was yeah. debt. Yeah. And it was kind of inadvertent. When the yeah. whole debt taxation thing happened, it yeah. was, you know, a strange casualty. Yeah. So that, gold, and even international funds now come under this third category the where category. they are marginal below two years and above two years, they're 12 and a half. Okay. So, so it, above long term, if I hold mm -hmm. an international fund, like I have a US tech fund, if mm -hmm. I hold that for more than two years, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm paying 12 and a half percent instead of marginal, which is, which actually, is huge, which is huge, which is yeah. actually very cool. I don't think enough people are talking about it. So that could be a good news. So I mean, that would be the fund of funds. Uh, Swarup, is that your interpretation that even for gold funds, or let's say multi-asset yeah. funds, which multi are not 65% equity, right. how do they get treated now? That okay. anomaly has been corrected. That's all which correct. Is, which is okay. a big, big... Uh, it's a big positive. ask from the mutual yeah, yeah, fund. No wonder the smiles. Now I understand. There you go. <laughs> no, but it's not... See, it was an anomaly. Yeah. Mm. Right? Mm. It was something which was probably missed out. And in the discussions from what little I know, it was an anomaly which was waiting to be corrected. Right? Okay. So it is not something which was asked out of the ordinary or anything. And that, that correction was probably huge for... for Many, especially us, we, we are big players in the fund of fund category. It's been uh, a welcome boost for us. So this this other category, Radhika, which mm. could be fund of funds, multi asset, a lot of other funds. Yeah. Uh, you're saying across the board, long-term capital gains would be now 12.5%? Yeah, exactly. yeah. There was a requirement, so right? 65% equity, only then do you get equity taxation. So either you are an equity fund, mm -hmm. in which case you are in the equity tax camp Correct. of 20 or 12. Correct. Correct. Or you are a debt fund, Correct. in which case you are not in any capital gains Correct. camp, you are Correct. not even at a capital asset. If you are neither one of these, then you are in this third camp that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the people in that camp are FOFs, mm -hmm. international funds, we are big players there, gold ETFs, right. anything else, any other, like we have a multi-asset fund that used to get indexation mm -hmm. benefit. Mm -hmm. All of these things that are not 65% equity or 65% yeah. debt are essentially in the middle camp. And now they are all taxed at 12 and a half percent? Above two years. Above two years. The, Above the, two the years. holding period is, is two, two years. years. That, that's a big one and a lot of simplification. Yeah, it's, for it's I think simple. A, I mean, this indexation yeah. thing goes yeah. away. It's yeah, actually yeah. simple. Okay. Swarup, now let me come to you. For the end investor, I mean, this is a little confusing, a little overwhelming as well. <laughs> what do you make of it? Because while all of this has happened, another major issue that now unlisted shares and listed shares are being taxed at parity. You know, uh, for unlisted, it's two years as the holding period. Mm -hmm. For listed, one year as the holding period. But capital gains tax is 12.5% on both. Great. Of course it is. I mm -hmm. think uh, before we get to that topic mm -hmm. also, on real estate, there's one fine print which I think most of the tax guys mm -hmm. should actually read out. Mm -hmm. uh, is there used to be a fair market valuation concept of 1st April 2001. Uh -huh. If that still remains, mm -hmm. uh, because taking away indexation so retrospectively mm. doesn't make sense. Because right. the indexation year was changed, mm. I think about six years back, mm -hmm. from two, 1981 to 2001. Right. So you were allowed to market, create a fair market value of your property mm -hmm. and then uh, pay tax. So with reset indexation. your old property value to 2001. One. And then, then calculate do the indexation. indexation. Now, if mm -hmm. you have removed the indexation, mm -hmm. are you saying you're doing it so retrospectively mm -hmm. that it's 50 years? Yeah. You can take away the indexation benefit of 24 years of this century. Yeah. If that's the case, <laughs> if that's the case, yeah. then most of the ancestral property is safe in terms of taxation. Let me quickly ask Samir. Samir, I'm sure uh, this would have sort of come to you as well. And I think there's a lot of chatter on whether the old reset happens or not. Uh, Samir, if so, you could hear me on property, yeah, whether the old reset still applies yeah, so the in 2001. Yeah, yeah. The, two, the 2001 substitution is available even now. Okay. That would be a huge relief. I think That's that, that caused relief. a fair amount of, you know, hard burn in the market today as well. But, uh, you know, just to go back now and how we need to look at our overall portfolio, considering there's a lot of tax change for us, so what are your hygiene steps? What would you advise people to do immediately? See, firstly, uh, equity investors should be happy hmm. because savings go into one of these assets. Hmm. Okay, if only equity taxation was tampered with, I would be very clear that the market reaction would be very negative. Mm. 
because you can't use up the money just because taxations have changed, right? You're going to be either your real estate taxation has gone worse off, mm. your uh, se several other taxations, mm. indexation is gone. Section 48 is irrelevant today, mm. right? Where it was only exempt for bonds and debentures. Mm. Now, not, nowhere there is indexation. So, mm. relatively, you're better off with just a 2.5%. If anybody would have voted for an increase in long-term capital gains, yeah. nobody would have guessed such a small number. And this could have been done in isolation, keeping all assets equal. But that has not been done. The detriment mm. to the rest of them is substantive. Mm. And the advantage to a mutual fund platform and equity mm. is, of course, relatively there is an advantage. In an absolute term, there is a loss. That's okay. point one. Uh, point two, I personally think... Uh, uh, if you look at what portfolio changes you'll have to make, I think gold, sovereign gold bonds attractiveness comes down dramatically mm. because the relative differential taxation uh, from a gold fund mm. uh, to uh, to sovereign gold bond now becomes 12.5% because mm -hmm. sovereign gold bonds were taxed is the only instrument which is still left. Uh, ULIPs have also come into the tax net, right? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the point too. Mm -hmm. So I think there is not too much asset allocation change you'll have mm -hmm. to do. Uh, your attractiveness of sovereign gold bond has come down. Mm -hmm. But I personally think that the biggest risk was the broader market selling off mm. but the broader market should hold up with mm. a taxation change like this because the biggest risk was the differential performance mm. of the broader market small and mid cap over the last year and a quarter with nifty of about 35 40 percent okay if there was a worse off news then this additional alpha which the broader market got Mm -hmm. would have compressed significantly if not the headline. So, so let's see if we've indeed digested the bulk of it and whether you know we can go back to business as usual. Uh, Samir, if, if you can hear me, another aspect which kind of gets related to you know our investments is the angel tax being abolished. Now the first headline is like, okay, it's great news for startups. But the reason I'm bringing this up is that angel tax has been abolished, which means that these guys can perhaps go back and raise easier capital. So I don't know, you think that will have any bearing on the IPO pipeline plus the fact that now unlisted shares are getting the same tax treatment as listed shares. So does this mean that the private markets become more vibrant? You know, retail will always chase return. Okay. I'm just wondering whether retail will now quickly start going and trying to, you know, get unlisted shares, pre-IPO shares because the tax treatment is the same. Yeah, no, look, uh, I do think that it will give a big fill up to the startup economy because, you know, like you and me again discussed this, Ruby, uh, uh, you know, this did uh, be, this, this was a big issue uh, whenever, you know, there were uh, premiums being given to companies beyond what the valuation methods were prescribing. And essentially it was a tax on capital. So I do think that it's a very welcome step when we are uh, taking away this entire angel tax provision. And I do think that that coupled with the 12.5% reduced tax rate which applies for resident investors now uh, for private shares, which is unlisted shares. I think that will give a big, big flip uh, to the private market and to the startup economy. I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a big step. Okay, something to keep in mind as well. You know, uh, overall, of course, there's, there's a reduction in the personal income tax uh, slabs, but only in the new regime. Yep. Standard deduction goes up, but only in the new regime. Overall, uh, you know, what thoughts on the budget? Overall, wealth and personal finance as aspects, Radhika. I think it it is broadly in line with expectations. Look, it was mm. coming on a backdrop where you needed to do something about consumption beyond the top 10% mm. of India. Mm. And mm. how do you address consumption? You address right. consumption by giving people more jobs and right. it's a jobs budget and it's a tax budget. Sure. And you address money by putting more money in people's hands and effectively that is what you have done. Well, you know what, uh, speaking of uh, the budget and putting more money in the hands of the people, we actually have a Shireen now uh, who is with uh, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri. So let's go across and uh, get some thoughts from him as well. Shireen, over to you. Thanks very much. Yes, the reactions are coming in. Uh